Welcome to this Light Reading MWC Insider Guide Series. This is Terry Sweeney with Light Reading, and joining me now is Greg Dahl, Director of Product Management Service Providers with F5. Greg, thanks for joining us for this conversation. Thanks for having me. We are talking about telco clouds today, something that telcos have been deploying for at least 10 years. Um, what's changed in this space that they're now looking for new options? Yeah, look, Terry, uh, five years ago, I worked on Telco Cloud with a different, different company. Um, you would have told me that you and I would be talking about this in five years. I would have been skeptical. But the reality is, you know, we're still seeing uh, service providers struggling with Telco Cloud. They've been trying with for, for 10 years with virtual machine, now with cloud native, uh, and they've had a lot of issues. I think it, it boils down to you know, the existing models. Uh, there are two dominating models for Telco Cloud, and none of them is really satisfying those service providers today. One of the, one of the model is, you know, call it the vertical stack, right? And typically for 4G, that's what happened. You would go to some of the leading 4G vendors, uh, buy a packet call from them, and they will say, I take care of everything for you. Uh, we will do the cloud for you, don't worry but then you will lose all the flexibility. And it's really, from my perspective, it, it is purely anti-cloud native. Um, and then the opposite model was, you know, I know how to build clouds, I'll do it myself. Uh, I think you you probably remember at and in the old days uh, went that way with their network cloud uh, and they will build it. And it's, you know, fantastic, obviously. So these providers are very sharp people to do that. But then how do you evolve that over time, right? You have new, new technology trends, uh, new network functions to integrate new use cases, upgrades, et cetera, it becomes like you know, a nightmare for service providers to manage. And so people are looking for alternatives to those two models nowadays. All right. Um, you mentioned cloud native and also the the, the virtualized environments that, that a lot of carriers or their suppliers uh, used. Are these mutually exclusive? Do you imagine they'll sit side by side? What, what's what's the vision there? So I, I think really cloud native is, is so much more important in terms of shift for service providers compared to the first evolution to uh, network virtualization that was, I mean, if you recall, HCNFV started uh, more than 11 years ago. So it's not it's not a teenager, but it is a problem child. Um, and so I think cloud native is much more transformational for service providers. It changes the, the way they do business. It changes the way they operate uh, as, a, as a company across the board, uh, changes the way they, they, they are able to push services to their customers and, and market them. So I, I think it's not going to be just cloud native is virtualization plus. No, it's going to be completely different. Uh, it's also a model where I think uh, service providers beside cloud native are uh, paying much more attention to applications. So they go from being heavily connectivity centric to now being more application centric, right? And caring about what application their their customers are are using. And so it it completely transformed the requirements you had on sure. your on your telco cloud in particular. But all that being said, um, the the virtual environments, whether they're the the PAS uh, in, in platforms or containers what what have you um, they they win a lot of praise especially among software developers for both their flexibility and processing power this in turn it has been credited with all the innovation that we've seen on the services side in, in the last ten years or at least a lot of it which is a really valued thing by carriers and service providers so. Again, I'm trying to understand, will 5G telco clouds and virtualized development exist side by side, or, or how, how do you envision that? Yeah, so I fully agree that this, this being able to actually consume the platform as a service, that's something that's extremely valuable, right? And, and even more if it's an open open platform where people can contribute and develop, et cetera. So that will those properties will continue to exist to exist in the cloud native environment, uh, but there will be significantly significant changes in terms of, you know, connecting that also with all the operation and GitOps models. So the way that 
everything is going to be operationalized is going to be different from what you you know what you've seen like five ten years ago with with virtualization right um f5 is entering this space tell us a bit about the decision to to go there yeah uh so you, you know we've we've been in the in the cloud space for for a while now we acquired a company called Volterra several years ago We've been very successful in offering services with this F5 distributed cloud platform. Uh, in particular, we have a number of, of customers, like, you know, I think we, we announced a few of them, uh, like, like Telefonica in Spain or, um, or also SoftBank in Japan and a few more. Uh, and those customers in general came to us and they say like, we actually like your platform. We think you should you should try to help us on the telco cloud side. So they like the fact that the, the platform as a service model, they like that everything was pre-integrated. Uh, and they say like, look, if you can do those, you know, let's say three things on top of what you're already doing today, we think you'd be a great telco cloud platform for us. And this is really something that is high priority for us to fix. And so that's that's where it started uh, some time ago. And so we've been, you know, implementing that, and working with some lead customers on this. Uh, and so, yeah, there were. Um, I, I would say, look, at the end of the day, um, it's cloud native. It's also how do you map five G to cloud native? Uh, and we thought we had a lot of intellectual property as as F five to address this this problem space. Uh, and so, yeah, we worked on this and and. So in particular, the integration with um, 5G network functions and Kubernetes. So, you know, cloud native is very broad. It's a, it's a business, uh, 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 you know, trend. It's, a, it's an operational model. Uh, but how do you translate that into technical implementation, right? And obviously the key platform for that in terms of orchestration has been Kubernetes. When 5G was born, uh, if you recall also like, you know, NGMN papers and ITUT, et cetera, this was, cloud native was a big thing. I, I personally was very excited with this because I think it's a completely transforms the way that service providers will, will operate. And we start seeing some of this. Well, let's, but, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how, how, does, how does the cloud native format um, simplify uh, cloud deployments, um, telco cloud deployments specifically, um, that would make this an attractive offer for telcos and service providers? Yeah, so it, it it simplifies a lot because the way that you can integrate application, in particular those network functions, becomes much more efficient, right? So you can, you can you know, onboard them much more easier. Uh, you can use models like GitHub. So that means instead of having an army of people manually doing tests, you can have automated test pipeline and, and activate that uh, automatically. Uh, so, you know, I almost conceptually, I, I, I think about what happened in other industries where you were able to have those software artifacts. Uh, so think about, you know, uh, medication developments, vaccines, uh, planes, and by being able to simulate and, and have software artifacts, you could actually completely accelerate the way that you were, you know, developing products and bringing them to market, etc. That's really what we are we are starting to see happening based on cloud native, and that's why it's important we don't screw up uh, in in implementing that uh, for for telcos. In in that same vein, um, historically, IT applications, network functions, even edge customer applications have often been built and and run in di completely different clouds. Do you imagine that carriers and service providers will maintain that same best practice going forward, or should we expect that uh, 5G telco clouds will always be purpose built for 5G itself? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean, I look, there were some good reasons that this happened, right? Uh, different budgets, different people, different requirements. Regulation might be specific for 5G. That's different from you know IT. So some of this will continue, but I do I do expect I'm starting to see some consolidation happening, um, and it's not that different from in the past what you've seen in in networks, right? Uh, you used to have for each use case you had a different network in in telcos, and then you know over the past 10 15 years you've seen a lot of network convergence happening uh, across use cases, and so I think cloud consolidation or cloud unification I should say 
is going to happen. In some cases, it will be just using the same blueprint across different use cases. It might be different instances for you know, regulation reasons, et cetera, or it might be the same, the same deployment across use cases. I think specific use cases are also going to push for this unification. Uh, if you start having you know, private 5G combined with edge application, edge enterprise application, AI factories, all of this has to work together. We, you cannot silo these things. And so I think that actually will play nicely with uh, for us as F5 because we 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 are used on in particular uh, on uh, on F5 uh, distributed cloud to host this variety of application. We are not purpose built just for network functions. We are making very strong augmentation to our platform to support network functions in particular fixing this gap between Kubernetes and 5G, which is a huge problem. Uh, but on top of that, you can run, and we already have customers using you know, AI on top of the platform or enterprise applications, et cetera, or, or even IT applications. So we, we are glad to see this trend towards consolidation and unification, and we are well positioned for it. Um, it also means that you'll be competing against, uh, I think, more traditional cloud vendors like Red Hat with in, in the hyperscaler market, or or even on the services side with uh, Amazon Web Services and Azure. Um, how how do you greet that prospect? Uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, obviously, first of all, the the cloud space is so big that there's probably uh, enough space for 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 all players to for few players to to contribute. But I think more more importantly, um, you know, there will be some some service providers who are happy with the legacy approach and or you know who are talking to hyperscalers. We are just trying to solve issues that are not solved by these by these players today, uh, and we think we have something unique we can we can position there uh, in terms of both operational model, commercial approach, etc. Uh, with our own F5 Telco Cloud. But that being said, at the end of the day, we you know we meet our customers where they are in their journey. So some of this problem, like addressing the gaps between you know 5G and cloud and native environment, uh, if some customers come to us and they say we want to fix it in a Red Hat environment, no problem. We're already doing that. I think we we announced how we work with uh, one of our VIP product called SPK. Uh, for 5G core at Verizon. Uh, we do that in very close partnership with, with Red Hat. So we are augmenting the OpenShift platform with, with our technology to deal with 5G. Uh, we are working with, with uh, hyperscalers uh, similar to make sure that their platform that has not been built initially for 5G can also deal with it. Uh, there will be some announcements on uh, during during MWC, so stay tuned for, for that. But Again, at the end of the day, we're we're trying to do the right thing for our uh, service provider customers, and that means we are part of the ecosystem. We work with the vendors you mentioned or the the cloud providers we mentioned, but you know if there are gaps, we we want to make sure we address those too. Great stuff, Greg. Thank you for the F five preview as we run up to Mobile World Congress. I appreciate you joining us for this MWC Insider Guide series. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Terry. We've been talking with Greg Dahl, Director of Product Management for Service Providers with F5. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading. Thanks for joining us for this MWC Insider Guide. We'll see you next time.